Hey guys, Josh from Mad Charcoal here. I'm going to show you guys how I make my gesture portrait drawings. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different styles, but this is one of the styles that I like to do. All I'm going to use is a uh, blending, I mean a uh, kneaded eraser. This one's really old and dirty, but you can buy a new one if you need that. A compressed piece of charcoal, like a soft compressed piece of charcoal, and a piece of willow charcoal. You can kind of see what that looks like. These are a little bit different. Um, this one's a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to remove. This one's a little bit harsher, darker, softer, if that makes sense. And then um, a blending stump. That's all I, I will use for the whole for the, um, all these drawings today. And I'll try a different, a couple different things. But it's uh, the the essence and the point of a gesture drawing is to get, I guess, the essence and the and I'm not so much likeness, but the energy of the reference or of the person. So we're going to try to capture that without being too precise and being quick with it. Uh, I like to keep mine underneath a minute-ish, sometimes more, sometimes less. If you need, you can put your timer up so you don't spend too much time on, on, uh, on an entire on one drawing. But let's, let's start into it. I'm going to use the compressed um, piece of charcoal first. And I have the first reference pulled up. I'm going to have all the references pull, um, put into the bio, I mean into the, into the description. They're all linked in Pinterest, and um, so you can follow along with me if you want to do your own gesture and your own type of drawing with it. I'm going to try to take the energy from the piece, and I'm not going to be specific with any features of the face, the nose, the mouth, the eyes. I'm not going to start drawing everything in. I'm going to make use ener like the energy of it, and I'm going to squint and use the values of it as well. So here we go. I'm going to start off with the eye line. The eyes kind of around there, and then this part of the face is really dark here for the first for the first reference and the nose is kind of hints there and um, the hair comes down close here to the face. Make sure you're keeping an eye on the proportions that you're using and the angles and the energy that is used with, is, uh, is shown within the reference. So I've got a pretty good idea of where everything kind of lies now. I'm gonna take the blending stump and I'm going to swish it across. Looks like there's a little bit of a motion here, motion there. It's okay if it's getting a little too dark in some places. I'm gonna come back in with the blending stump. Some of these will be complete failure. Some of them will look nice. It, um, depends on the way you go about each individual drawing. So, uh, but they're meant to be quick and they're meant to be exercises. Sometimes people like these uh, as finished drawings, but I use them mostly as exercises, and I also use this in some of my finished pieces to start off the work. Gesture, you know, not anything exact, but so I'm popping in the highlights here with the kneaded eraser, just where I see them, and I think I've got a decent energy going here that is close to what the reference is showing me. Not exact, but it's kind of there. Um, don't be, don't be very, how, how do I explain it? Don't be very exact with your movements. Make sure that you're being fluid. That's a key to it. Make sure you're being fluid, and then you could touch it up in some places if you like. I like the rough look, I like the expressive look. Make sure their expression is good. One way I make sure that my expression is, um, is not coming up short and that I'm actually using it is that I draw with my shoulder like this and I don't really try to use my wrist all that much. I kind of use my whole arm to draw and that makes sure that, I, uh, that I'm not being too exact with each little movement and I'm using large movements and using my entire arm to draw. So that's a good way that uh, you keep yourself in check if you're not used to drawing so loose and if you need to loosen up a bit. Now let's get to the next the next reference, it's a guy here, so put this one aside. Now we're gonna draw this one instead with willow charcoal to see the difference here. I prefer compressed charcoal just because it stays a little better and it gets a little darker a little quicker, but uh, but willow charcoal is great too. Um, let's see if we can, oops, let's see if we can match the energy on this one. So I'm squinting, I'm looking, I'm studying my reference a little bit before I get started and I kind of get an idea of what I want to go for. 
I'm not afraid of going outside of the lines of the actual face, but I want to kind of show that there is a face there, even if you have to really try to look at it. All right, let's get into it. Once again, I like to start with where the eyes go like that. And the angles, large to small, work. Large to small. Don't work on the little areas before you get your whole movement of the whole thing first. Find your dark areas and find your large shapes. That'll help you find where the drawing lies. Try not to use line, try to use the side of your charcoal. And um, block in instead of draw in with individual lines. Makes it way harder to be accurate that way. So the cool thing about Willow Charcoal is I could just kind of wipe it with my hand instead of having to uh, erase all that much. I just do that, wipe it down a little bit. It gives it a nice little texture when I, when I wipe on it. Almost like if it's skin sometimes, like gives it like a smooth look, you know, like just try not to go over the dark areas because you'll lose them real quick. But it kind of gives it this gray tone of like flesh. Of what flesh looks like in black and white. If you do it right, if, if you can figure it out, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's I like to put it where it meets the where the light meets the shadows. That's kind of where it lies like that. And um where where there is shadow, I try to keep it rough and not filled in because the eye doesn't really naturally the eye doesn't really naturally focus on these areas it focuses on where the light's hitting so i uh, try to keep my details in here maybe i'll just pop in a little bit more of a highlights with my kneaded eraser which this comes off way easier than the compressed charcoal <clears throat> don't get too detailed it's easy to get lost in the details but I mean, you can also make a finished drawing instead, but if you're actually just going for the gesture drawing, don't get too detailed. But it's a great way to start for a finished drawing because you get the essence and you don't get distracted by all the little parts first. All right, next drawing. So it's the next one. Got another guy, but he's an almost, almost a, um, a side angle, a profile angle, but not quite. Between three quarters and a profile angle, I'd say, but closer to profile. Let's see what we can do. I want to get the entire head showing the motion like this. So let's get the compressed charcoal once again. And find the front of the face kind of goes this way, so I'm gonna start with that and then kind of block in where the eyes are, the shadows when I squint, and then like the hair is really dark in this area. And it kind of comes across this way. And the nose. It's really important um, that the proportions are pretty accurate with the nose and the mouth, otherwise it'll seem all out of whack. I like to measure my, with things with my eyes while I'm doing this and kind of keep an eye on other features um, of the face so that I kind of have a better idea of where everything goes without making it look all wonky and stuff, but still not being super exact. And I want to make this, since it's such a strong profile on this outside part of the face, then I'm going to um, I'm going to take the kneaded eraser and before I start with anything, kind of push out where I see the profile of the face like this, kind of make it a little bit more exact on this part since this is such a crucial part of the of the reference. Now I can come back in once again with my blending stump, which I don't use too much unless it's a uh, Compressed charcoal. I don't really use it much on the willow charcoal, but like see we're starting to lose a little bit of it But it's okay because we can use this to draw as well, and then I can always pop in um, some Highlights with the kneaded eraser, but The hair comes out this way a little bit more. I never almost never detail hair in very much I just like to get the essence of it, and I like to get to keep the focus on the face So let's come back in with the kneaded eraser make a nice chisel shape Erase that, erase that. I know I'm kind of going a little bit over time on these drawings, I'm not staying under a minute, but I'm a little slower if I have to explain what I'm doing as well, or try to help you guys understand what's going through my mind. Um, so I'm taking a little bit longer on these, which I think it's a good thing to kind of go from 
working really slow and working really fast and kind of transferring in between um, just based on just based on what you're trying to accomplish and how you're trying to grow as an artist. But I do, do think it's really important to learn how to draw quickly so you can recognize larger things and not get lost in all the small little things that don't matter as much as the grand scheme of things. So you've got a pretty good idea of where everything goes, where what things look like. We're getting these nice grays in here because I'm putting down the charcoal with blending it, pulling it from the shadows with this blending stump. And then I'm kind of lightening it with this kneaded eraser. So it's like a dirty, a dirty paper look, which is a really nice mid-tone for skin. Skin is almost never actually completely white or completely black. It's always um, in between with these shadows. Some people are darker than others, which makes it um, the, 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 the mean of it or the, the mean value, which is like the mid-tone, it kind of pushes that back or forth, but it's never completely white or completely black. Let me block in a little bit of this nostril here since I'm losing that a little bit and it's a very, I think it's part of the focal point here. So I'll just drop that in a little bit. And nose is a little pointier than I'm showing here. So erase that out just a slightly. Mouth comes out a little too far. So look, yeah, that's, that's nice. I like this. I like how this can come out. Now let's get to the next one. So we don't take too long. We want another straight on, but with the shadow on the left. I kind of picked these uh, references by random so that I wouldn't have to uh, wouldn't have to just focus on what I do like drawing, but more so what is good to practice. Let's make this one with the dirty blending stump. We'll gesture it out with the dirty blending stump. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to the face so I get a better view with my iPad. And let's get the motion of this one with the blending stump and then we can come back and add some darks because it's not going to be dark enough, but I'm going to see marks. So here we go. Since it's dirty already, this blending stump. A big part of it is this shadow on the nose, the side of the nose here, but there's no shadow here, so I'm not gonna block anything here. And the mouth kind of comes through here a little bit. Very rough. Outside of the face is somewhere around here. This whole area is like in shadow. So I'm not worried about where this outside edge is for this part of the face because it's it's dark and it's the background is dark as well so i'm going to focus on where the values change pretty drastically which is in here right it's it's where these hardcore shadows are and then lights hitting the face right around here so i'm just kind of laying down where i think things are not caring too much about the dark shadow areas like here and I want the details here so I'm going to take my willow charcoal, squinting to see where all the darks and lights are, and I'll get that eyebrow here, trying to follow that. I'm not too worried about that edge of the face there. And there's a shadow on the bottom lip there. Something like that. This is a little bit harder to draw than I find personally than the other references, but I'm not too concerned about it. I want all the details to lie in this area here. So I'm gonna pull that just a little bit. Don't lose it, don't push, pull too hard. So we get this nice mid-tone in there. Erase some things to keep the shapes. Don't lose them. I come across there. There's a highlight right here on the nose, so we'll make sure that's nice and light. And this eye might be too dark there, yeah. And it's light there. So maybe just a touch of the light on this side. So I think we do have a bit of the essence of this one, maybe not that much. The ear highlight right here is pretty prominent as well, so I'm gonna put that in there. Um, maybe not as good as the other ones, but not bad. Okay. Next one, it's another girl with lots of hair. Hair is kind of, on, on the right side, is kind of uh, blending into, oh, that's a used paper. 
running into the shadows of the face. So we're going to kind of block that in together, I can already tell. Oh my goodness, my dog is going crazy. Okay, here we go. I'm going to block all that in together and then kind of frame the outside of the face here. I can already tell that just so I could have where the light is hitting on the face where I want the details to be and where the focal point to be. So here we go. I'm just going to block in where I think that eye should be because that's really important. Nose. No. And then... All right, so we can work with this. I'm gonna blend it. I'm not gonna worry about all this craziness over there because that's in shadow, but see, we can kind of get an idea of where everything goes here. That's where the ear is. Squinting to kind of see the values, not get distracted by all the marks. Don't worry about your mark making, worry about the values. The mark making will take care of itself. The mark making is what makes your values, so don't worry about how clean your lines are or what material you're using. Just focus on how you're making your values. And there's some light hitting there. Make sure that you're very precise on what the values are in where the light's hitting. Don't worry so much about where the, the, the precision of the, of the values in the shadows. Once again, I can't stress that enough. Yeah, all right, we're losing some of these deep, well, not details, but these, the accuracy of these um, features of the face. So I'm gonna block that in just a little bit. This kind of supposed to come down this way a little further. There's some dark value there. The ears kind of hiding there. This should come in a little bit further here. And that should be darker. And then, this outside edge of the mouth is ooh, down to a tiny piece, like around there. That's more accurate. Tell already. Sweet, we lost some of those, but I like that effect. So we lost some of those highlights. Let's block those back in. There we go. Quick drawing. It's really good to draw quickly. It helps you so that you don't get distracted by the details. You improve on your skills, your mechanics, and your recognition recognition of values. Yeah, so that's it for today's tutorial. I'm gonna hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you guys have fun practicing this and, and show me what you guys uh, are able to make. Send me a DM on YouTube or something like that. If you guys are um, interested in buying my artwork, check out the link in my bio or um, visit madcharcoal.com slash shop. You guys are the best and um, be well. Stay safe. See ya.